professional? Bam. So you do it with professional. Okay. <laughs> now we've already done it once. Now it's confusing because now I've got two different claps on the track. Right now. <sighs> Ruined. Now that we're giving Ari uh, video recording 101, let's jump into it. So we, we are doing this one this time with, with Ari. And uh, did we mention that last week? Oh, th- th- oh, someone mentioned it on Twitters? Oh, someone mentioned it. I can't remember. I don't know. But maybe we mentioned the, the, the thing last week, the recording last week. So we're here with, with Ari, my 10-year-old son, who has been speaking at the NDC Security Conference here in Oslo. And we thought we'd involve match. 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 this one, just so we can see it's real. Yeah. I, I like the way that you work for TroyHunt.com, so <laughs> remember that. Child labor laws. You're here to do my bidding. <laughs> all right. So we're just going to talk about some of the things we've done this week, because now we've all done talks. Mm. And I thought we could start with Ari. So why don't you talk about what it is that you spoke about in DC this week? So I spoke about like code combat and coding for kids, and um, a few kids came to my code club, and we're going to do it next week in London. And, and can you remember, like, what did you what did you teach them? What do kids need to know about coding? Methods and strings and tags and blah blah blah. Okay, so you so when you go through Code Combat, you can just go to like codecombat.org. Is org, isn't it? I don't know. I can't um, remember. I think it's .com. Maybe it's .com. Wasn't it code code.org and codecombat.com? Ah, uh, it, it is. Yeah. Uh, so code.org is the one that works really well for for small kids. Codecombat.com, sorry, is the one that I was after. See, I'm glad mm. you know what you're doing. Uh, so when you go to codecombat.com, it is browser based, which is super super cool. So anyone can go there without having to install stuff or privilege access or anything like that. And then it's it's like game based, right? So yeah, so like it's it looks a bit like all of War, World of Warcraft, or like there's different characters, and you can get different weapons and armor stuff. Okay, and for, for you as as a professional child, uh, <laughs> well, what do you like about coding with like ogres and armor and things? It like that? makes coding a lot more fun, right? Because like, it sort of adds a bit more adventure. Okay, so do you, but like, would you enjoy the coding otherwise, or you think like you need that extra exciting stuff? Um, I, I wouldn't play it as much if it didn't have like the swords and armor and ogres, um, because like yeah, it just makes it more fun. And that's um, when we think about code combat. Like code combat was a bit like that too, where you could you could do like the Minecraft code combat or the Frozen code combat or Star Wars code combat or whatever the thing is that your kid likes. They could they could sort of work in an environment that they recognize. Or at least a theme that they recognise. Um, okay, so we're going to do this in London again next week as well. So if you're watching from London, you can come along to NDC London for free. What day are we doing? It was Wednesday? Uh, yeah. It's next week. <laughs> I've actually forgotten. I'll, I'll put a link to it. Like, we'll, we'll just figure it out in the day. We'll be there. All right, so that was, that was Ari's talk. What did you talk about, mate? Oh, uh, what are so you going to talk about? Yeah, my talk is next. My talk is in like 35 minutes so yeah I, i'm doing a new talk it's called 25 years of ssl secure ish socket slayer uh, so it's kind of like a, a talk of two halves first half on the history of how we got here so from like 1994 when encryption was first introduced and what the web looked like through to today and then some of the more kind of like modern problems that we're having um you know kind of like on the internet with encryption these days so um, yeah, and then the last two days, uh, yesterday and the day before, I did my TLS workshop here at NDC Security as well. Actually, so speaking of which, like you have got the shirt on The, the Hack Yourself so First I, I spent, shirt. I spent the last two days doing the Hack Yourself First workshop. <laughs> so, and so it's the last good. one of the the next one in London next week is the new version, right? Yeah, yeah. in fact, I've got to talk to you about that because I had more ideas on it this morning. But um, we're, we're Not changing. that we're cutting it close to the workshop oh, no, next week. No. <laughs> we're, we're changing the workshop a little bit. Just a, a couple of things have changed. Like we were doing a module on mobile APIs where we'd route things like phone through laptop and then we'd look at all the mobile traffic, which is just becoming increasingly painful because Android's making it really hard proxying. Yep. And it's also loads painful of apps are pin now because loads of apps are, are, are cert pinning. Also painful because loads of networks have client isolation, <laughs> so one client can't see the other yeah. client in order to route through. So we're basically going to kill that off, uh, and then we're going to spend a bit more time with some other things. And of course, now we've got the same site, Cookie Stuff, which changes yeah. to CSRF module. It's not in Chrome imminently. Chrome 80, I think it's the fourth or fifth of Feb. Yeah, so it's very very soon. Um, and uh, you know. I'd, when I, I didn't tell you, but when I did the CSRF module a couple of days ago, I was sort of talking about CSRF and so, okay, so how many people know about same site cookies? And I, I had 42 people in my workshop, and there were like zero Tumbleweeds, yep. 
And so, okay, so you're aware in like two weeks a bunch of your stuff might just fundamentally break, right? It's weird, like, because I do the Hack Yourself First workshop as well, and I was doing private ones in the last two weeks, and it's exactly, it has been exactly the same in every workshop yeah. that I've done. It's like, this is coming, and nothing's going to stop it. <laughs> so that's going to be fun. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> when that breaks. I'm going to take the day off. <laughs> and then this, this morning I did uh, Internet of Pwn Things, which is a lot of IoT stuff. You were in there. You had a little bit of a cameo. Yep. Um, I had a, it was like it was a photo of you laying on the floor. With uh, heated, heated tiles. Yeah, so in, in, in fairness, like there, was, there was context for it. We were staying in an Airbnb a couple mm -hmm. of weeks ago, and because, because we're Australian, we don't have heated floors. So when you saw the heated floor, it's just like, this is amazing. I've just got to lay on this and like bake. <laughs> Yeah. 40 degree floors. Yeah, you cranked it up to 40 degrees. Was it nice? Was it cosy? Cosy. But like it was hard, Toasty. hard but cosy. So he was laying on the floor, getting all relaxed, and, and my phone was somehow connecting to the same SSID that my washing machine at home has because, and it, here's a really funny thing, I think you saw this as well. It connected to, I can't believe I'm saying this. So my washing machine has an SSID that it broadcasts, and because washing machines because washing machines <laughs> and they've all got the same SSID all these Samsung washing machines they've all got the same password and they've obviously all got the same pre-shared key as well because now I'm wandering around the world and my phone's connecting with like random washing machines <laughs> including in the Airbnb the other day and then including in a uh, convenience store last and she had shopping <laughs> so go figure um, so that was that other things on my list for this week I just passed 3 million subscribers on Have I Been Phone wow so yeah, I know. It's a lot of emails to send each breach, right? You know what's happening is every time I load breaches now, or every time I run statistics or anything like that, it's actually getting slower and slower and slower uh, because I've got a larger table joining on these massive breaches, and it's actually really noticeably happening. So I, I think I'm at the point where I need to sort of go and basically just add more cloud. So all right, just dial up the sprinkle some more cloud on there. Sprinkle cloud, <laughs> direct line through to my wallet. <laughs> yeah, <that's, laughs> yes. But that is the nice thing. It's like if I want to make it go faster, I can do it easily. I just scale the SQL Azure database. Yeah. It goes up. Uh, so that was cool. Three million subscribers is, is good. It's, it's normally ticking around 1,200 to 1,800 new subscribers uh, a day, which is, wow. um, yeah, which is pretty cool. God, that's some, yeah, that's some rate. And it's, um, what am I at now? It's, it's usually about 160 to 200,000 unique visitors a day, which is, which is pretty cool. It's a lot of resources. You bought? Yeah. All right. So, all right. So, so since you bought, sit forward, and then Scott can explain piehole because you want to talk about. Oh yeah. Oh, he, we were talking he, about he can this. Explain to him what piehole means as well. Piehole. So, um, people watching hopefully will be familiar with the piehole. It's like a well, it's, it's software you can deploy in a Raspberry Pi, and you put it in your house. So you put install the piehole on the Raspberry Pi, on the Raspberry yeah. Pi that little computer. Okay. So you put that into your house. And then it blocks loads of crappy stuff on your network. So uh, it blocks <laughs> edit. It blocks loads of naffy stuff on your network. So you know if you've got like advertisements or trackers on pages, you load the web page. You want to read a, read a news article, and then it's got to load like all of the pictures and the videos and the sounds for the adverts that you don't want. Mm -hmm. So when I'm at home on my home Wi-Fi, which is why this came up, I notice like pages load faster and they're more responsive because the page is smaller because the pie hole strips away all of the, the junk that you don't want. And the reason this came up the other day, we were talking, I was like, you know, I'm really looking forward to going home because when I'm on my home network, everything on my phone loads so much faster. And I can actually feel the difference from being at home and being here without the pie hole because now like if I load a news article, it's got to wait for all the pictures and the videos to load and everything goes really, really slow. So I was like, it's, it's weird that you can actually notice that and like I kind of sat there and I'm like god like why is this I was like oh yeah I'm not at home yeah. and, and yeah. it's pulling down all the ads and the JavaScript files and everything else so pie hole all the things so that um, because it, it runs at the network level like when you're at home as well and you open up your laptop or something like that and you go to a website there's a lot of stuff that gets blocked and just doesn't load so it's, it's much faster but it's, it's normal like ads and junk like that unfortunately not ads within the YouTube videos <laughs> you're yeah. always watching it that doesn't quite kill those but a lot of the other junk just disappears so anyway ads are there for websites to make money and anyway which I'm not opposed right. to however well, when they're pulling in like four and a half meg of JavaScript. It's like, well, the, so this is the thing. Like, and it, you and I both got sponsorship. Just a picture. We've <laughs> like, got sponsorship on our yeah. blogs. And we both went, 
okay, sponsorship in terms of a line of text, we're okay with that from from the uh, performance and privacy aspects because it's obviously like tracking, it's yep. not pulling down loads of junk. Uh, I've got up to 140 bytes worth of content which will be compressed as well. Yep. So, yeah. And I don't mind ads, like I found loads of cool stuff with targeted ads, like it, you know, I was on Facebook and it's like, hey, there's a, um, you know, a showing of Star Wars with like a live orchestra playing all the music. And I was like, wow, that's actually really on point for me. So like I say, not opposed to... It's like they know what you're interested yeah, in. Yeah, I wonder how they do that. How do, how do you think they do that? So how, how do, do they think they, they do what? How do you think they know when Scott's on Facebook, how does Facebook give him ads that are really relevant to him? They don't like him. <gasps> <laughs> No. <laughs> Rewind. All right, so he's on Facebook and he's looking at all these things and he, he like, he's got friends that go places and he checks into places and he tags them and then he likes mm -hmm. things. How mm -hmm. do you think Facebook figures out what ads to give him? Because they can see all the things he's doing, right? How do they know I like Star Wars? Stalkers? Well, they are. Well, They're yeah, professional that's, stalkers. That's <laughs> yeah. Professional legal stalkers. Because like, they can look at all the things that he's interested in and if they start saving all that and it's like, hey, Scott likes science fiction and also... Uh, Scott is a male and he's this age group and he works in this industry and they start to learn all these things about him and then they can start to target these ads. It's like to IT nerd. Really, really relevant. Must like Star Wars. But you're right, it's kind of stalkerish, right? Like it's a little bit freaky because they know so much about Scott that they can give him really, really specific things. So. I'd rather just pay like two dollars a month for my Facebook account, though. I would be happy with that's that. Something. Yeah. that. You know, that's what I noticed with YouTube. Like I was watching YouTube in the hotel room last night on the TV, and so, <laughs> oh yeah, YouTube has ads if you don't pay for it. Yeah, no, I do. I don't mind paying like a few dollars a month for for stuff. Anyway, that's the next generation's problem. Not <laughs> yeah, our problem. we'll be retiring soon. It's <laughs> we'll fine. We're retiring. All right, so look, that's uh, that's pretty much it. I think we'll cut this one a little bit short because you've got to go. Yeah, I've got to go prep. Your talk very soon. Uh, last thing from my side is sponsor. So I've got Vronus sponsoring again this week. Uh, they got a new uh, sponsor message this week as well. Security FWD, a brand new YouTube show from Vronus. Watch episode one. How far can Wi-Fi travel? I actually, want to watch that because the Wi-Fi. How far things... can Wi-Fi travel? Yeah. So that's a long I just way. had a quick look at uh, look at. There's a YouTube video they're linking to. A uh, quick look at the um, the bit there. They've got a whole bunch of code and some big big aerials as well. Which, um, big like Yagi antennas and stuff. Which That's I know super big, cool. big aerials are right up uh, your belly as well. So that, that might be something interesting. That's a weird Australian term right there. I think yeah. it's English. Wasn't it English? What is it? Didn't we get all that belly wick? Belly wick? Belly? Is it like your stomach? I've, I've never heard. And, he, I've never and you're Australian. Belly there you go. Belly wick. The district within which a belly or a bell of B A R I. A person's area of skill, knowledge, authority, or work. Isn't that bailiwick? Is it just because you say things funny because of your well, accent? Like router. router. <laughs> router. Apparently, right. that's rude in Australia. Okay, I think this is a good time to cut this. <laughs> like, I don't know why I said <laughs> it. That, I got in trouble. On that <laughs> note, uh, next week we'll be in London, so let's try and do this yep. from London because, uh, oh, geez, you know what? It is literally one week from today. We've got to fly home. You'll be in the airport, yeah, so we'll be uh, slightly early. So we'll, maybe we'll try and do this Friday morning, Thursday, or something like that. So, thanks for watching. For this is the first time I've done it with three people too. So you're the first, first three. Yes. Uh, there we go. All right. Thank you for watching. See you.